society and under a government and there are regulations to be followed and uh, these regulate our production and also our designs and our, our markets. So the government regulations, even uh, taxation and all others have to be followed. And uh, our distributors also affect us and affect our, uh, uh, compel us to change because the, the com quicker distribution methods affect logistics and mm -hmm. they affect warehousing. Okay. They affect supplies, uh, which means that there must be in-time supplies. Mm -hmm. So the more efficient the transport or the logistics, the more uh, efficient, efficient the distribution. The distribution will and uh, for that, sometimes we have to change our organizational structure. Yes, definitely. Because change is not only in the markets or in products, change is in the organizational structures also in the departments, units, subunits. Even in the manpower, sir. In the factory management and in human resource management. Yes, exactly. You are very right. Now, coming to globalization. Globalization is a new dimension because it has made the competition open mm. to all the world. Yes. And uh, the, the producers which were not your competitors before may become your competitors now, now. Yes. and you have to uh, in a way compete with them and that makes the competition global exactly and that is uh, what we mean by the forces that uh, uh, affect change or that compel us to change there's another dimension to change and that is time how time is related to change let us see. Change with times or get left behind. You will be hired to bring about change, not to just maintain the status quo. You will need to become a change agent. What exactly do we mean by that expert? This is very interesting because normally what we do is called status quo. That is things are happening in the normal course of time and everybody feels comfortable but we may not be changing we may be sticking to status quo while other people are changing and that means that we'll be left behind now therefore in modern management the managers are not hired just to maintain status quo because that is not a problem they are hired to make changes, to effect changes, to implement changes, and first of all, to feel the need of change before others and to be proactive in this respect. So this is what we mean here, that status quo is something which does not require a person to be uh, hired and to be paid very highly. The managers are hired to make changes and that in other words means they are the change agents. People who drive change are change agents. We are all agents of change. Change agent skills are as important to our success as our professional discipline skills. The purpose of our jobs is to change what is possible as companies and individuals by adding value every day. Here is an important point because managers do not go it alone. Nobody can go it alone. We are all parts of organizations. So when there is a change, mm -hmm. the change will be in the organization. All right. Which means the most of the human resource will be will involved be in mm -hmm. that change. And it's an interesting study. There are various ways in which the human resource is involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, there we may have to set up uh, new units. We may have to dissolve the old units, which means that there will be a change in what we call divisionalization of the organization. 
this also means that there will be changes in the placement of people, changes in the assignments and changes in work breakdown structures and activities. So the change is all encompassing and it in a way involves everybody and also it affects everybody and that we'll be seeing later but here we must note that the, it's not the manager alone who changes it's everybody involved in the organization. Students, there are certain driving forces for change. What are these driving forces? Let's see. Technology, nature of the workforce, international effects, mergers, competitions, economic shocks, and social trends. Now, we have already discussed technology, and of course, we cannot go into its detail. Yes. Because technology are changing daily yes and uh, there are changes in methods of production and uh, with the entry of uh, electronics and nanotechnology and software there are uh, sea changes in all sorts of uh, production methods and that has also affected the organizations and their structures now when we talk of changes in organizational structures, obviously it means changes in the human resource management and because it's the changes in the placement of people and assignment of duties and the new technologies require training also. Exactly. And uh, for those elaborate methods of training they have to be adopted by companies and more and more money is now being spent on, on trainings. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there are uh, international effects, which means that due to opening up of the markets and due to entry of new players in the markets, the competition has widened and it has become more intense. Exactly, more tough. So the manager has to be very conscious and alert all the time and uh, particularly he has to uh, be very quick in feeling the need of change so that he catches the time by the forelock and before other people uh, start uh, uh, those productive methods he should be one of the forerunners in these there are mergers and acquisitions due to various compulsions and they also make changes because the company who is acquiring another company or who is being merged in another, in another company, company, naturally they will be having changes. All right. And sometimes there may be layoffs also and sometimes there may be opening up of the uh, company. So by economic shocks, do we mean that a certain company undergoes liquidity or something like that? You are right. But economic shocks could be internal as well as external. external. Mm -hmm. Because as we are discussing uh, the regulations and the governments, the loans may become scarce, they may become costly and uh, that will again affect our return on investment because the debt burdens uh, may get heavy. Similarly, there may be economic shocks due to disasters, yes, exactly. due to ban on imports, due to adverse relations uh, among the nations. Any restrictions that and, might happen. And uh, there may be then restrictions placed by the governments exactly. on the imports and exports. exports. And uh, social trends are also an important factor because as we know, fashions change. And uh, nowadays you can see daily changes in the designs of mobile phones and uh, televisions and uh, LCDs and all sorts of uh, DVDs. And, and even the fashion industry, In sir. the fashion industry. <laughs> yes. And these, uh, in the fabrics, in exactly. the designing of uh, fabrics. 
So these are the forces that uh, continuously tell us to be wary and tell us to be on our guard and be sensitive to the new trends and uh, respond quickly to any trends that could be of benefit to the company. Students, keeping in view what the expert has been telling us about change, it means that change is the only constant, it's everywhere, it's omnipotent. Then why do we resist change in an organization if we are so prone to change? We feel comfortable with the old ways and that is what we call habit. And uh, people in general also have habits. So people at workplace also have habits and they become accustomed to certain structures, workplace procedures and also the methods that they use in their daily office life or organizational life. So they would feel a bit shy of uh, any big changes mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, they resist these changes also. Similarly, this is human nature that we fear the unknown and uh, while making changes, particularly big changes, when we are not sure of their results, which means, as we have studied in other courses, that there is more an element of uncertainty okay. rather than risk. Mm -hmm. Risk is something that is known and uncertainty is something which, unknown which is unknown, unknown and cannot be measured exactly so one feels afraid of uncertainty similarly economic factors are the big factors mm. that is the factors that govern the whole regions the nations and the governments and the economic structure at some places there are more stringent uh, forces, the, 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 the procedures are uh, strictly governed by the government. At others, there is freedom and there is more uh, democracy. And uh, there are certain countries in which we may be uh, having uh, uh, heavy bureaucracies, which in a way limit the working of the Organization. organizations, yes. while in others we may have uh, uh, more open uh, working. Similarly, there are government uh, pressures to take uh, certain decisions and sometimes even the top management is not free to take certain decisions. Mm. Selective information processing here means that we all have a certain uh, tendency when we receive information we are more receptive to some parts of it and we may ignore certain Few other parts. parts exactly so that also affects our decision making and that mostly tell us to not to make changes, changes. because we accept the things with which we are familiar mm -hmm. or with which we are comfortable. So we uh, weigh that information more heavily than the information which is about uh, new procedures and processes. And then again, sir, we uh, rate our opinion higher than the uh, change opinion sometimes, which is also one factor. Yes, of course, that is also a factor. Now, side by side, there is an interesting point that it's not only the individual that resists change, organizations also resist. How do they resist? Let us see. Why do organizations resist change? Group inertia, peer pressure, group norms, security, threat to established power relationships, threat to established resource allocations, limited focus of change, change affects others in the organization, poor communication and threat to expertise. Sir, would you be kind enough to explain these to us? They all have been explained already, but for the two last points, yes. 
and they are interesting to note. They are poor communication and threat to expertise.